Scotland has a heritage of standing stones which mark the landscape north to south and east to west. This film focuses on one part of this amazing heritage, the Pictish symbol stones of the north and east of Scotland. We're going to examine the current thinking about the Pictish symbol stones, which were constructed between the 5th and the 9th centuries. And we also hope to show why after more than a millennium, they still have the power to fascinate and engage us today. The Picts and their symbol stones have generated more than their fair share of myths and mysteries over the years. We're travelling on the way to Broomend of Crickey, just on the outskirts of Inverurie, to unravel one of those mysteries. We're going to look at the remains of a Bronze Age stone circle, which has a very unusual connection to the Pict. The remains of the Bronze Age stone circle here at Broomend of Crickey and others in the area show that settled communities had lived in this area long before the Picts. It's thought that Stone Age circles like this one at Broomend of Crickey were memorials to the dead. The two stones on my left are part of the original Bronze Age stone circle, which probably comprised around about six stones. But the stone over here is quite different. Although the stone itself is Bronze Age and may have come from a recumbent stone circle about a hundred yards to the north of here, there's something extremely unusual about it. And it's the presence of these two fifth or sixth century carvings on a Bronze Age stone. The symbol stone was discovered near here in the 1850s during the building of the Aberdeen to Inverurie Railway. To save it from damage or destruction, it was moved and re-erected next to the other stones. To people who were unaware of what had happened, the presence of this Pictish symbol stone with the other Bronze Age stones was a source of considerable confusion about the place of the Picts in early Scottish history. Indeed, the Pictish symbol stones have been a source of almost endless argument and controversy. What was their meaning and purpose? Pictish symbols were mainly carved on standing stones, although a small number appear on jewellery, and some of the earliest were carved on cave walls in Fife and at the Sculptor's Cave near Lossiemouth on the Murray Firth. The sculptured symbol stones have for a very long time been the main focus of popular interest in the Picts. Here at the Sculptor's Cave uh, in Cove C near Lossiemouth is a very early version of one of the key Pictish symbols, the crescent and the V-rod. It's the same symbol that we saw at Broomend of Crichy and is the most frequently occurring of all Pictish symbols. But what does it actually mean? What message is being conveyed by this and the other symbols? At the top of this path are the ruins of Dice Old Church, which is under the flight path to Aberdeen Airport. But it's not the ruins of the old church that we've come here to see today. It's the two Pictish symbol stones that have been re-erected inside. 
1903, Joseph Anderson and Romilly Allen wrote what would become a classic study of the symbol stones. They divided them into three classes, one, two and three. This is a particularly fine example of a class one Pictish symbol stone. The surface of the stone is natural and undressed. That means that it hasn't been smoothed or shaped in any way. The sculptor has created a simple outline of the symbol using a punch and a hammer. A chisel was also used to make a deeper and wider line. The line was then smoothed out, probably by rubbing with a stone tool. This style of carving is referred to as incised carving. Both of these symbols, the Pictish beast and the double disc and the Z-rod, appear simple and uncomplicated. But I hope you'll agree that they both show a remarkable degree of artistry and skill. The second Pictish symbol stone at Dice is a class 2 cross slab. Cross slabs have Christian crosses and Pictish symbols, sometimes on the same side and sometimes on opposite sides. The four Pictish symbols on the cross slab are the crescent and V-rod, the mirror case, a triple disc, and the double disc and Z-rod, which also appears on the class 1 stone. Because of the positioning of uh, this slab here at DICE, it's difficult to see the other side, so we can look at another example. Aberlemno Kirkyard has a wonderful example of a Class II Pictish symbol stone. In contrast to the incised carving of class 1 stones, the Pictish sculptor here carves in relief. This means that the carved object has been carved proud of the background surface which has been chipped away all around it. The carving of the cross on the front of the stone is particularly impressive. The sculptor has created a high relief design with beautiful scroll work and mythical and real animals. Class 2 stones as a whole were carved later than the Class 1. Class 2 were carved in the 8th and 9th centuries, although there was a period of overlap between Class 1 and Class 2. Finally, in terms of Allen and Anderson's classification, there are class 3 stones. They have a wide range of figures and ornamentation carved in relief, but they have no pre-Christian Pictish symbols. Class 3 stones were carved at the end of the 9th century, when Pictland was under intense pressure and ultimately conquered and colonised by the Gaels of Dalriata. But we are concentrating on class 1 and 2 stones, the stones which have Pictish symbols on them and which represent the Picts in their prime.
For centuries, the meaning and purpose of the symbol stones has baffled expert and amateur alike. What do they mean? What are they actually for? There are between 40 and 50 symbols, depending exactly on how they are defined, and they appear both on the Class I and the Class II stones. The symbols cover a wide range of geometric shapes and patterns. Pictish artists were also fascinated by the animal world. Mythical animals were also part of the Pictish sculptor's repertoire. The double disc and the Z rod is one of the most frequently occurring of all the symbols. Only the crescent and V rod appears more often. The symbol has been interpreted in a number of different ways and on a number of different levels. Some researchers think that it depicts a lightning strike between two thunder clouds. If there's an underlying meaning, it's unclear. It's also been suggested recently that it's a bird's eye view of two adjacent round barrows used for some Pictish burials. Many researchers believe that the double disc and Zedrod is the symbol for a deceased Pictish king. The Pictish beast, the third most common of all the Pictish symbols, has been likened both to a seahorse and also a dolphin. But art historians of the Picts don't think that it's an attempt to represent a real animal. Rather, it's a mythical animal that encompasses the power of land and water. While many Pictish symbols remain resolutely enigmatic, a few seem rooted in the real world. The tools on the Dunfalandi stones seem to be those of an iron worker of the time. Two symbols, which almost always appear together, are referred to as the mirror and the comb. They appear really clearly here on the Maidenstone cross slab near Benehi. The mirror and comb are not regarded as one of the main Pictish symbols. They are thought of as a subsidiary symbol, symbolising the female gender. They might represent a woman who has raised the stone in memory of a deceased husband, or even the woman who has herself memorialised or remembered by the stone. On the cross slab at Hilton of Cadbull on the Murray Firth, there is a wonderful depiction of a horsewoman riding side saddle. The adjacent mirror and comb seems to confirm the gender connection. The views on the mirror and comb reflected the idea of many early scholars that the Picts were a matrilineal society. These views have been challenged. Many modern historians reject the idea that Picts traced their descent through the female line. Some recent thinking interprets the mirror and comb not as a statement of gender at all, but as a simple declaration or statement, this is the grave of, or here lies, this marks. The arguments over the mirror and comb are a timely reminder that while the symbols themselves are carved in stone, their real meaning and purpose are certainly not. So what do we really know about the meaning of the symbols? And how close are we to uncovering the symbol code? Initially, it was suggested that the symbol stones were memorial stones to deceased members of the Pictish elite, and the symbols carved on them were their badges of office. The symbols, it was suggested, were worn as tattoos by the office holder during their lifetime. After death, the tattooed symbol was carved on a standing stone as a memorial to the deceased. 
The double disc and Z rod was the symbol for a deceased Pictish king. The Z rod represented a broken spear, signifying death. The crescent and V rod was the symbol for a lesser royal. The V rod in this case signified a broken arrow, meaning death. The serpent and Z rod was the symbol for a king's magician or wizard. These views, of course, were contested. Other scholars believed that symbol stones represented marriages between the members of two different Pictish lineages. This theory also seemed to explain why most symbols appeared in pairs, and how a small number of symbols were disproportionately represented on the symbol stones. These symbols represented only the lineages which were part of the Picts' ruling elite. In this view, symbol stones were probably intended as markers of territory. Recent archaeological excavations at Rhiney in Aberdeenshire have uncovered evidence of large wooden buildings surrounded by a wooden palisade, evidence of a high-status Pictish residence of the 5th and 6th centuries. The gateway to this royal residence was marked by the cross stain, a symbol stone which displays the Pictish beast and salmon. Do the symbols represent the Pictish royal who occupied this residence? The spot where the rivers Isla and Deverin meet is where the Tilly stone was discovered. Some of these rivers and streams later became boundaries between Scottish medieval parishes. Did the parish boundaries reflect even older territorial divisions established in Pictish times? One key problem for the student of symbol stones is that there are no contemporary documents which explain their meaning or purpose or even refer to them. However, a consensus view does appear to be emerging among researchers today. And this view suggests that the symbols are not badges of office, nor do they represent alliances between different lineages. The symbols, it's suggested, have the characteristics of language. They are actually Pictish names. The current view that the symbols are names has led some researchers to speculate that the most frequently occurring Pictish names, which appear in the lists of Pictish kings, might actually equate to the most frequently carved symbols. And if this were true, then Drust might be represented by the Crescent and V-Rod. Brithy could be the Double Disc and Z-Rod. And Gartnet would be the Pictish Beast. Of course, this is just speculation. But one way in which a hypothesis like this could be tested is by examining the small number of Pictish sculptured stones which, in addition to having symbols, also have a carved inscription. Is there a connection between the inscriptions and the symbols? Do they actually mean the same thing? Could there be a Pictish Rosetta stone which will unlock the symbol code? like the Egyptian hieroglyphics. In the next programme, we're going in search of it. <laughs>